Hi, everybody, brothers and sisters. Uh, for my update for the trades, uh, next Monday, we will be up to approximately 109 uh, every hour, every day. It kind of changes from uh, one or two people. But we'll be at 109 trades back in the plant at that time, plus powerhouse personnel. Uh, <clears throat> that'll be on Monday the 25th. Uh, the following Monday, which will be the first week of June, at that time I expect the recalls to be finished. All the trades will be in, including the apprentices, the registered apprentices. So that should all be taken care of. One thing I'd like to say is my focus has been on getting as many people back into the plant as soon as possible. Uh, there's a lot of things in the contract that are equivocal. Uh, as we come back, what shifts we're on, what department we're in, uh, please understand that, again, my focus is getting people back as soon as possible, and uh, that's where we're, we're headed. And hopefully that's all done by the first week of June. The selection for vacations has started in some of the plants, or continued, I should say. Again, I was off in January. I haven't been back until just recently. So uh, we're continuing with the people that are back as far as we can uh, for next uh, year's vacation selection. So that should all be done as soon as possible. We want to get that done. Uh, <clears throat> I've had some questions about overtime coming up and mandatories uh, as far as Saturdays goes. We will not have mandatory Saturdays for the foreseeable future. That all depends on, on our, our plant load as far as production. Uh, a lot of people have asked about uh, where we're going, where we're headed as far as production goes, one, two, three shifts. The only thing that really determines that obviously is sales. So uh, that's going to be uh, uh, brought into a brighter light very soon. Uh, right now we're going to do the two shifts production coming up in a few weeks and that's going to last for a while. Maintenance will be on three shifts so uh, you can count on that for a while. Again, another thing that we're going to still continue with, I want to reiterate this, the mutual shift changes. We're on three shifts. There's no reason why we can't continue that. So if you can find someone to change a shift and you can both be happier where you're going to go, that will be great. One thing I would like to say that I, I was in remiss last uh, update, the benefits guys, uh, Jeff, Steph, and Rob, they've been uh, invaluable to me. I mean, I took a lot of questions about benefits. I didn't want to steer anybody in the wrong direction. Uh, I, I put them uh, onto the rep uh, for benefits. Uh, they did a great job. They were always available to me. Uh, we got things done very quickly. I understand the issues that they've had to deal with as far as uh, with the country the way it is and, and all the CERB and EI and, and sub and everything. So I'd like to thank all three of them. They did a great job for me and for you, the, the, the membership. Um, obviously, the sub-question is, is, is there all the time. Understand we are working on it. And as soon as we get a resolution to that, uh, we'll make sure everybody knows. Uh, so until next week, everybody stay safe. And uh, welcome everybody back to the plant when they get there. If you've got any questions, give me a call. Uh, we'll take care of any issues that you'll have. Thanks a lot. Hello, everyone. For the people that don't know us, I'm Rob Galachi, Stephen Cronin, and this is Jeff Banks. We are the benefits representatives. We would like to start off by thanking and saying a big thank you to the members of Local 88. In this unprecedented time, we've had a lot of challenges, especially not having contact with our uh, EI person uh, which backed up uh, a lot of the EI claims over the uh, period of the layoff. That left people without money for a period of time, and uh, we've, been, uh, we've been extremely busy since this layoff was announced. The members of Local 88 were very patient and understanding over this period of time. The three of us appreciate all the kind words by phone and social media, and we try to get back to everyone in a timely fashion, as quick and as soon as possible. Uh, so we have a few outstanding issues uh, that we're currently still working on. Uh, one of the outstanding issues that uh, seems to be a big hitter for people is they ended up having to serve a wait period again at the beginning of March. So when we first got laid off again, people found out that they had to do the wait period again. Uh, we've looked into this issue for a few people already and this issue seems to be either an, an error with the reporting or the reporting just wasn't done at all. 
So if you ended up having to serve the wait period again, please contact us. Uh, there is a way for us to try to get this fixed for you. Uh, what it is, is called an anti-date. Uh, this anti-date request goes into Service Canada, and then Service Canada sends it off to IPOC, which is level two, and then they make a determination whether or not to pay it from there. Now, there is a bit of a issue when it comes to doing this. Part of the problem with that is it'll put your claim back into a wait as they try to resolve this issue, and it could take up to 28 days. So that's why we, we've told a few people to wait until we end up coming back, just so you have a bit of time to try to get this worked out. The other issue we've had is a big issue, is CERB and SUB. We feel that the government jumped the gun on this and put every claim in Canada as of March 15th on into CERB, which was out of our control. We have had several meetings about this and the times we thought we had a result, as you've heard earlier from Joe. But as of right now, we do not have any result. We are continuing to work on the issue and hope we will have a resolution very soon. We have people returning to work that are on CERB and are asking how this is going to affect their CERB. As it sits right now, it will affect it greatly. You will make over a thousand dollar limit that is allowed and that you will be kicked off a CERB and EI could ask you to pay back some of all the CERB or portion of it. We are asking anyone that gets kicked off to bring us the letter and we will see what we can do. In closing, the three of us would again like to thank the members of Local 88 and the Communications Committee and all the uh, representatives. We would also like to thank Mike Van Bokel and Joe Graves and a big thank you to the payroll team that has helped us out over the time. And uh, stay, stay safe. We'll see you in the plant and hopefully everybody will be well and stay safe.